So in this uh, two part lecture series, I will be telling you about the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics. And so in this uh, particular part one lecture, my goal would be to tell you that oh, why do you even need this path integral formulation? Uh, and in fact, I'll be telling you why do you even need this idea of uh, the infinite path in uh, the in quantum mechanics, right? So we, I will be starting from what you already know, and that is the uh, double slit experiment. And so let's uh, consider a source. Uh, let's say that there is a source S, and this is a source for uh, particles. And we'll consider a, a, a screen like this. And we'll consider a detector that is placed on this line. So we'll say that there is this is the detector and let's just call it O and let's say that in this screen you have two holes right so let's draw them like this actually let's make this thing a bit over here right okay so you have two holes in the screen and one is a1 and the other one is a2 and at some t is equal to 0 over here we have a particle and it is emitted from s the source and it passes through one of the holes in the screen uh, a, a, a hole a1 or a2 right and at some t is equal to uh, t is equal to t uh, the particle reaches the detector o now the amplitude for detecting the particle uh, is given by well from quantum mechanics by the principle of superposition it is just the sum of the amplitude for the particle to propagate from uh, s to a1 and then to uh, o and then uh, from s to a2 to o so, uh, well, uh, excuse my drawing. Okay, so I can write this down as uh, the amplitude for a particle that leaves the source S, propagates to A1, and then reaches the desired destination, that is O, that is in the detector. And then we have from S to A2 to the desired destination, O. Now what I can do from here is let's say that you don't have two holes. Say you have more than two holes. Say you have a third hole. What would happen then? Well, you would have a hole over here. The particle could leave the source, enter this hole, and then it could go to the detector. O. Oh, let's call this hole A3. So then you would simply have S from a uh, particle leaving the source S propagates to A3 and uh, reaches the detector O. And so in general, uh, if you make more and more holes in this screen, uh, you can write down the amplitude as uh, that a particle it is detected at O, the amplitude would be the sum over I, and I are the number of holes that you have and the amplitude for uh, a particle going from s to any of these particular hole so i can write that down as a i and then reaching its destination o well okay but th then you could also ask that if i add another screen perhaps what would happen then and so let's draw another diagram and say you have uh, again a source over here you have two screens now say these are the two screens and then you have a detector O at some point here right okay now let's say for example uh, I add three holes or I put three holes in both of these screens so for screen one let's say a1 a3 uh, a2 
and for screen 2 let's call these holes as b1 b3 b2 right now what would happen is if a particle leaving source s propagates to a1 a particle leaving source s could propagate to a3 or it could go through hole a2 right what happens from here now well if a particle that enters hole a1 it could go through the hole b1 it could also go through hole b2 it could also go through hole uh, b2 i mean uh, when i said b2 over here i meant b3 right so it could go through either of the holes b1 b3 or b2 likewise for a particle that entered a3 could propagate to b1 b3 or b2 and again similarly for a2 could go through b1 b3 or b2 and then finally when it leaves uh, b1 b3 or b2 it reaches its desired destination that is o so it could be from b1 to o b3 to o or b2 to o right so for this then you can write down in general the amplitude for a particle that leaves the source s propagates to generally for any hole a i right in this particular example of course i cannot draw i holes right so i took an example for three holes but in general it goes through a i number of holes and then it could again go through b j number of holes and then finally reach its desired destination o and then you simply sum over uh, sum over all uh, these over i and j right but well then from here also you can ask a question that what if or what would happen if i keep adding holes into the screen and then say at one point i have infinite number of holes in the screen what does that mean well here lies the fun part because uh, think about this for a moment what does this mean for the poor screen right well it just means that if you keep on adding infinite many holes in a screen at one point the screen is just going to disappear voila and what does that imply that implies that even in an empty space the total amplitude for the particle to reach the uh, destination o or the detector o it is the sum of all the possible paths between the source and the detector and here it is here i have told you why do we even need this idea of uh, all the possible paths right and say for example you could have uh, a source over here s and again you have a detector over here o now what could be the possible paths right you could draw anything you could say this is this could be your possible path you could say this could be your possible path or you could say this could be your possible path right and there could be well infinite many of these paths right and so you can then write down the amplitude as uh, this a uh, for a particle that leaves the source s propagates to the detector o in some time t what is that well you can write that down as the sum over all the paths for this amplitude for the amplitude for a particular one path right from le that leaves the source s goes to o in some time t but this thing is just following uh, one particular path and you take this and you sum over all of the possible paths right okay so from this now this quantity over here is the important one 
because from this the question arises well what does this quantity it means right or how is this defined so how is this quantity defined now Feynman surely followed Leibniz and Newton's idea and that was that to take a particular path say you take one of the particular paths from s to o say it's something like this and then you approximate this path by straight line segments right so uh, well that would look something like you have these line segments and forgive my drawing right something like this right and then you let these segments tend to zero, right? And then the situation is exactly analogous to the scenario of filling the entire space with screens that are spaced infinitesimally close to each other uh, with, uh, with, of course, an infinite number of holes in these screens. Right. So at every point, you could say that you have a screen over here with, well, infinite number of holes. Right. So from this, then the next natural question is, how do I even construct the amplitude for uh, something like this? That is a particle leaving the source S goes to O in some unit time T uh, and for for a particular path, right? Following one uh, particular path. So this is what we want to figure out, right? And so I can write that down as the amplitude for S to O in some time T for a particular path. Well, I'll just put this, right? Okay, so for a particular path. Now, well, it turns out that this is very simple because if say I know the amplitude for each of these infinitesimal segments right over here uh, then I can just multiply them together and that would give me the amplitude for the entire complete path and in quantum mechanics the amplitude to propagate from a point uh, let me write this down actually in quantum mechanics the amplitude for uh, uh, for a particle to propagate from one point say qi to qf it is governed by the unitary operator right or the time evolution operator and what is that from quantum mechanics recall that it is given as uh, exponential iota Hamiltonian and t Right? So this is the unitary operator where again Hamiltonian is your, the uh, it, it describes the total energy of your system. Now if I write down the state of the particle in the bracket notation then I have the state say it is in some state Q. With this then I can write down my amplitude that is in question as uh, QF uh, the unitary operator acting on Q I right now uh, this thing is just saying that you have initially Q I the state is Q I the time evolution operator acts on it and it takes it to the state Q F now from this then we can mathematically write down the complete Feynman's path integral formulation and in fact uh, Dirac had already done this mathematically long before Feynman did. So in the next part of this video we will use this thing and we will completely derive the Dirac's formulation of the path integral of quantum mechanics.